What's going on, guys? Tony here, hanging out from Paradise Garage and learn all about EmPaint.com. Thanks for tuning in today. Um, if you guys can quickly type in the chat, let me know if you guys can hear and see me. And also, uh, let me know where you're tuning in from. Um, just type in the chat, let me know. And if you're a Learn Auto Body and Paint VIP member, type in the chat VIP and where you are tuning in from. And I again, I just want to quickly apologize for last week. Um, Monday, I couldn't make it. Something came up and then I rescheduled for Tuesday and I totally forgot about it because I'm just so used to doing these things on Mondays. Um, so I totally blew it last week. My apologies for that, uh, but we're back on today. Hope everyone's doing well. What's up? What's up? What's up? Dub Z Z two eighty five. What's going on, buddy? Um, again, if you guys can hear and see me, um, just type in the chat that you can hear and see me, uh, and then also let me know where you're tuning in from um, in the world. Hey, buddy, how are you? I'm doing good. What's up, David? And um, again, we're going to be on for about 20 minutes, give or take, uh, to take your, your auto body and paint questions super, super quickly. Um, if you're having you know, any troubles, you don't know the, the next steps, um, we're here to help you out for a bit on auto body. Probably even just go to the shop. Let's see. Uh, we'll be making a custom body kit on the Chrysler 300, turning into a police car for the movie industry. Awesome. 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 I actually hung out uh with a guy old school his name was gene winfield and he made a lot of the movie cars back in the eight seventies, 80s and 90s uh for hollywood i don't know if you're you're uh, familiar with him but he does metal work you know fiberglass body kits gene winfield he's like in his 90s and um i i believe he's still pumping i'm not sure but it was uh a good few years ago, I went out to the desert, uh, the Mojave Desert, to visit his whole his whole workshop. I took a three day workshop with him and his crew, <clears throat> and we documented the whole thing and put it in Learn Auto Body VIP. So that's actually in the VIP course as a bonus. Um, I know some of the VIP guys got that as well. Super cool, and um, yeah, yeah, that was something we did. I think it was back in 2018, give or take. Um, VIP, what's up from California, Forrest? What's going on? Orlando, Stacy, how you doing? Hope everyone's doing well. Um, yeah, what's everybody up to? Any new projects you guys working on? Anything, anything? What's up, Jesus? What's up? What's up? Um, probably gonna we'll just head over to the uh to the garage, get out of the bus here. Um, other than that. No, I'm not familiar, but we made a few uh, for the movie called Duel of Legends starring Carrie Tagava. Yeah, I haven't haven't seen it. I'm not familiar with that. Uh, all right, let's go quickly. We'll head over to the uh, to the garage quick. And um, yeah, so whatever you guys are working on, let me know. Any um, questions on primer steps? I've been releasing videos on the Good Van Project. You guys, uh, you guys have been getting those videos. Uh, the next video will be um, literally painting um, the black. Um, no, actually, the next video is going to be painting the actual van. It's not running right now. The fuel pump went out on it, so I just re I just ordered another fuel pump. Um, hopefully, I get that thing back on the road because I need it. And it sucks because I, I just replaced the fuel pump on it last year. And now I feel like I feel like it's the fuel pump again because it, it starts, but then it just dies out. Feel, it feels like it's starving for gas. The trailer is on the move on YouTube. Cool. Um, you have a blessed day. David Mena. Hey, Tony, I got a nasty clear clear coat. I'm using this scraping blade technique. Do you think I'll be good with three coats? Uh, so you're saying you sprayed three coats of clear and you got a nasty run? Is that what you're saying? And you're using the scraping blade? So if you have a, a pretty significant run that's really looks like a raindrop run, you know, not like a sag, but more like uh you could see the actual run 
Um, what I like to do is cut it off with a razor blade. So the scraping kind of works, but it takes a while. Um, I like to just cut it off from the bottom going up. Just move your razor blade a little bit and just go up and you can literally cut the runs off. Um, then um, what I like, and don't go too quick because sometimes you'll actually peel the whole, that whole drip runoff down to the base coat. So just be careful, make sure you're using a brand new razor blade. Um, and you know, these are the razor blades that I like to use, you know, basic old, you know, razor blade like this. You guys know what I'm talking about. I got a box of them, old school box, but, uh, <clears throat> this type here, right? You just go upward like this and you just cut up, cut them off. And then I like to maybe use an 800 grit to kind of cut it down quicker. Then I'll go to 1200, you know, 15, 2000, 25, depending on what color it is. If you're doing like a black, if it's a black car that you're buffing, then you might want to go down to 3000. <clears throat> but uh, yeah. What's up, Gail, Ohio VIP? How you doing? What you guys working on? So yeah, three. If you got three coats of clear on it, that's plenty of clear coat. Um, just be careful. You know, you could use a coarser sandpaper, like I said, to just cut it. Um, you know, get get it down, and then maybe move toward a a fifteen hundred grit um, to to finish it off. Some people mix glaze putty, <clears throat> and you could put a skim coat of glaze putty over your run and the sag area, and then block it. It'll kind of be like a guide coat where you can see um, how much you're cutting, you know? And we have VIP videos of that as well in VIP. So check them out. <clears throat> Gail says, I got the epoxy primer on black half of my 56 Chevy lighting, lightly sanded and now can see a few issues. Going to put Evercoat filler where, where needed. Cool, 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 cool. 56 Chevy. My dad had a 54 Chevy. What kind of Chevy is it? Stacy Moore says, I painted my hood bare metal with epoxy primer uh, and it's been sitting for about a month. Do I need to sand the epoxy primer before coating it with my 2K primer? Um, if it's sitting for a month, I would just give it a quick scuff. You don't have to sand it too much. Uh, maybe just put like a... a Three, three, 280 to a 320 grit just to scuff it. Just go over it quick. You don't have to take too much off. Um, and then you could put two coats of heavy filler, a 2K filler primer on that. Um, normally, if you're shooting epoxy and you let that flash for 30, 40, 50 minutes, give it from 30 minutes to an hour, you know, that's a good window. Um, then you could put a 2K filler primer right on top of it without sanding if you're doing that the same day. Um, you know, I... I've, I've actually waited a few days and primed on top without sanding and I haven't had any, I never had any issues, but a month you might want to just give it a quick scuff and, and, um, and paint it <clears throat> and spray it. Uh, okay, cool. Over the epoxy, do I put a coat of sealer, then a filler primer? Nope. You can go straight 2K filler primer over the epoxy. Okay. Um, I use a hard block of wood to cut a run. So yeah, whatever you want to use, if it's a good, nice, solid piece of wood block, you can use, you can use uh, sometimes in some areas, I will break a, a paint stirrer and that, that would be a good little thin little block to, to block out. Um, Kovacs does have these little mini blocks. Do I have any here or are they in the house? These are like little mini blocks by Kovacs for runs that you could use you know there's all types of stuff out there um what else you got you can use a dura block this is just a big huge block here you know but you got smaller blocks that i've cut in half so this is a, re a regular hand block that i that i cut in half because i needed something small to get into a tighter area so you know whatever and i kind of like you know the the hard foam blocks because they they give you a little bit of flexibility if you need it you know Let's see. Bel Air 56 two-door hardtop. Beauty. 
beauty, beauty, beauty. My brother has a 57 two, 210 with post, and then he has a 57 Bel Air four door. So he has those two models. Um, and I have a 67 Chevelle Malibu right in back of me here. Took it out for a spin this weekend. It was really nice. Took it to the beach. You know, it's a patina look right now. It needs paint. Um, and if you take a look at the paint on this thing, I'm definitely going to take it down to bare metal. Like if we can see here, this is looks like it's the original paint, guys. You know, and we got down to metal here. A little rusting here and there, right? Got some dents, but no rust holes. We got pretty much mainly surface rust. Cracks, you know, old, old cracks because this paint is so old. So what I would do with this is take it down to metal, epoxy prime it, do the body work, you know, the body filler, get it all straight, and then put, you know, a couple of coats of nice 2K filler primer on it and block it out. <clears throat> Look at my trunk here. All right. It's just, you know, it's a patina look. It, it needs, needs paint. You know, it's cracking all over. This this needs to definitely come down to metal. All of it. And I will get to it at a certain point, and I will document everything and put it up in Learn Auto Body VIP. It's just that I don't think I'll be getting to this car anytime this year. You know, probably if I start it, it'll probably be in maybe next year sometime. I got so many other things I'm working on. It's crazy. But... Um, this will be definitely in VIP for you guys, a complete restoration. I just met up with my glass guy. I met him at the beach. I haven't seen him in years. He lives down the road from me. So he's like, yeah, dude, I'll pull all your glass. So definitely going to pull the back glass because I have some leaking. I don't know where it's coming in from. Um, it could be through, you know, one of these corners here. Um, it doesn't look like a lot of rust though. So what I might do is it, it could also be the weather stripping because I know once it's outside and it rains, I get water in my trunk. So what I might do is have my daughter get in there with a flashlight or even me, I don't care, I'll get in there. And then have have her spray water in the back and see, kind of see if I can see where it's coming in from. A friend of mine told me it's probably the weather stripping because it's so old and dry rotted, you know? Could be, it could be, I, have, I haven't had time to look at it. All right, let's get back to Q and A. Um, what pressure do you spray um, a sealer at? Um, sealers, you can spray at, you know, 22 to 20, 23, 24 pounds max. I wouldn't go any higher than that, but you know, if you got a good, good spray gun with good atomization, you should be good around 22 to 24 pounds, uh, spraying a sealer. Uh, but if it's a primer sealer, you could be lowering that a little bit. You know, you could be spraying from 18 to 22 pounds, depending. Sometimes if I want to reduce my overspray when spraying uh, a 2K filler primer slash sealer, um, I could spray at 18 to 20 pounds, you know, and it lays down nice. It lays down nice. Um, how much paint did you use on the van? Okay, hold on. We'll get to that question in just a bit. I just want to make sure I'm answering these questions here. Um, over the epoxy, do I put a coal sealer and then fill a primer? Nope, you can go straight. I, I, I answered that. Um, oh, let me actually put these up here so you guys can see. Okay, how much paint did you use on the van? So um, for the black, I used about three quarters of a gallon, three quarts on the black because we did we did uh, trim pieces and bumpers as well. And then the uh, the white, I used the whole gallon. So we used the whole gallon. It was about a gallon and a quart, five quarts for the white. And that's a big van. That's a Chevy Express. The whole roof is a lot of white paint. But we used the whole thing. There was probably a little bit left over, you know, maybe like uh, could have been a pint, you know, 20 ounces left over, which was basically garbage, right? Because you don't, once it's mixed, once single stage is mixed, mixed with activator and mixed up, you don't save it, right? It's it's done. Um, and it's always better to have extra than not enough, okay? Um, although you could stretch paints if you need to, you know, add a little bit more reducer 
if you're starting to notice you're running low on paint and you're like, oh crap, you could start adding a little bit more reducer, you know, after half of your, your vehicle is painted. You're like, oh man, I, I'm, I'm going to need another extra, you know, 20 ounces of paint here. You could just start adding a little bit as you go, you know, reducer while you're mixing. Cause sometimes, sometimes you're not going to mix everything at one shot, you know, sometimes uh, you're going to mix half of your paint see how much you know see how much you've got down see how much you need um so hopefully this helps <clears throat> what are your thoughts on weld through zinc primer um i don't honestly i don't i haven't really played around with that so i'm sorry i don't know does anybody have an answer for dan here i <clears throat> Um, okay, now the roof currently still had scuffed up acrylic lacquer from 40 years ago. It looks very solid. Can I put a sealer over that then paint it with polyurethane? Absolutely, you can. Um, if you don't want to cut it, you know, if it's a sentimental build, okay, and it's it's a car that you want to you want to know that you have a good paint job on it and last, you you know, it's recommended to get down to metal, epoxy it, then. You could put uh, a 2K filler primer on it, block it, then put your uh, your urethane clear, uh, single stage or base coat clear coat on top of that. Um, but if you feel like eh, it looks pretty good, it's pretty solid, then you could absolutely seal on top of old lacquer paint. Okay, you could absolutely do that. Um, to paint candy paint, do I have to put silver base all of the time? No, you don't. Um, but to get the full, full effects of candy, you know, it's recommended to go over silver, you know, a coarse silver, a fine silver, whatever, but, uh, it's not necessary. Okay. Uh, a good way to start practicing guys, before I, I continue, how many newbies on that's never been on before, or you're, you're new to auto body. You want to learn a lot of different strategies. Um, don't forget to just go here, head to learnautobodyandpaint.com to get my free uh, guide and video trainings, okay? Um, and then there's going to be a special offer to join VIP. If you want to join, join up. That's awesome. There's over 250 hours of everything that we're talking about in VIP, step-by-step -step videos on how to lay down candy paint, just like Emilio said here, um, and how if you're a beginner, um, you it's recommended by me, um, say you're doing a red candy. So spray a red base coat and then put your red candy on it. It'll still look beautiful. Uh, it might come out a little tinge darker, okay, than going over a silver, but it's going to be much more easier for you to lay down and spray than going over a silver. Because if you're doing red candy or silver and you don't have your the proper spray technique, spray gun distance, speed, flow, um, overlap, right, you're prone to do tiger to get tiger striping and have heavier areas than others you know especially if you're doing a, a big vehicle you know little motorcycle parts and little parts not that bad but you know with candy you're not painting and ending around here like a, a like a normal paint job okay um if you're spraying the fender right you're, you're, you're usually coming up to here with a regular paint and then you're, you're misting it down you're coming up to here like overlapping you never want to end here because you're going to end up with a a dark line going down each of your your body seams so even with more it's more so with candy and that's why when you're laying candy you want to go actually across the whole side of the car at once instead of stopping um and and painting single panels like when you're when you're regular you know when you're painting regular paints like a, a base coat clear coat or even a single stage so uh, this thing was candy we did, we did this thing candy over um, multiple colors, uh, started as silver. This was our silver under it uh, with heavy flake. Um, and then we did a candy and blended candy uh, to a, a, a blue candy, a purple candy up here. And then we did the same type of fade on the top. So this is, this is a complete candy paint job here. Um, we have another motorcycle in my container that was a complete candy paint job. And all of these videos, uh, will be in, oh, they are in VIP. Most of these are in VIP. Some of the, some of the footage I have to re-edit 
and because I want to make them better and then put them in VIP. But we have a lot of other candy videos in VIP. So hopefully that helps. <clears throat> how long before, um, how long do you have to wait before to fix clear coat runs? Uh, so it depends on the activator that you used and the clear coat that you use. Normally, um, if you're, if you're in hot weather and you're, what's up, Nala? And you mixed, you know, normally a couple days, okay? Sometimes if you're rushing and it's a customer job and the clear coat dried really well, you could color sand and buff the next day. But it's it's recommended to wait a couple of days, a week, or even two weeks, you know, to make sure that, that clear is really cured up and hardened. Um, and you can tell by poking it with your fingernail. And it's going to be soft no matter what you do. The clear coat will be soft for a couple of days, okay? Until you, until that thing is really sitting in the sun or something, and it's really dried out, um, then your runs will they'll start to feel a little bit harder. But even if it's soft, you could sand, okay? You could still sand and buff clear coat even though it's a little soft, okay? And it's hard for me to show you here because I don't have any wet, freshly painted. Um, clear coat, but I do have videos of this in VIP showing you all of this in detail uh, because, you know, when I made the VIP videos, we actually were going through the process and I do have videos with some runs as examples, how to color sand the buff runs and, and all that. So, so yeah, um, I mean, nasty runs. Can you go around the van? Uh, yes, I can. I could absolutely go around the van, but it's been dirty. I haven't washed it since I painted it. Um, about two months. It's just been sitting outside. Uh, never washed it. It's a, you know, whatever, but the van looks freaking fantastic. I did go around it in my other live streams. Um, and I do have a better walk around video for you that I'm in the middle of editing. So you, it's better for me to show you that one because it's nice and clean. There's no bird poop on it and stuff like that. But, uh, I mean, if, if you guys want, we can go around it right now. It's super dirty though. Like I said, it's been sitting for a couple of weeks. I just ordered my fuel pump for it today. Um, what are you reducing your 2k to use as a sealer? Just reducer, just reducer. So, you know, they don't, the paint shops don't say this, but if you reduce your 2k filler primer down and make it thinner, it pretty much turns into a sealer, okay? You don't hear many people talk about this, but that's what it does. And to use a true sealer before spraying, that's, that's a totally different product. So it's really not 100% true sealer. It becomes more like a, a primer sealer. It thins it out a little bit. It flows on smoother. And sealer is supposed to flow out really smooth. So the reason why you're, you're thinning down your 2K filler primer, hopefully this makes sense, is to make it flow out smoother, okay? So that's giving you that sealer. But no matter what, regardless, if I'm reducing it down and spraying it on smooth, I still like to cut it down with 400 grit sandpaper before I paint it. So, you know, it doesn't matter if you're using a 2K filler primer and mixing it and spraying it direct, kind of a little bit thicker, or if you're reducing it down because you want to get more product or you want to kind of smoothen it out so it flows out nicer, okay? Still, no matter what, I like to sit, let that cure, you know, for a day at least, a couple days even better. Um, and then I like to sand that flat, block it down um, with 400 grit before I, before I paint over it, okay? And a 2K filler primer is a perfect foundation to put new paint on top of. All right. So hopefully that makes sense. <clears throat> you guys getting this so far? We've been on for a while. Um, I'm just going to drop a couple links before we get to Stacy's question here. Uh, so there's the link, guys, to go to learnautobodyandpaint.com. Um, if you guys are interested in checking out some amazing spray guns that I spray with all of my projects, check out Zula.com and especially take a look at the X88 model. This is a really good gun. Um, I notice when spraying with this one, I can spray at a lot lower PSI. It's a low volume, low pressure setup. 
um, HTE, which is high transfer efficiency. It's a little dirty because I haven't cleaned it really well in a while. I've just been using it. I clean, I make sure I clean out, you know, the fluid flow. No, get out of here. The fluid flow uh, and the trigger and all that, but I haven't washed down the body really well lately. Um, but uh, this, I have sprayed base coat, clear coat at 18 to 20 pounds with this thing and it laid on really, really nice. So this is a good spray gun if you have a smaller air compressor um, and uh, and you wanna get some good results with it. So check this one out. It's the Blue Moon Atom X88. Um, there's also the Infinity model, which is just a different color. So the Blue Moon is just like gold, blue and green mixture. And then the Infinity is like a red per. Do I have the Infinity here? It's like a red and uh, red and blue purple mixture. Let's see if I have one. No, I have a bunch of blue moons, but I do have the X27. This is the X27 model, low volume, low pressure. Um, and let's see, Stacy, is there any pressure difference with the Atom X low volume? So the high volume uh, will require a little bit more pressure from your tank. So it's better to have a larger air compressor when spraying with that. Uh, the low volume, low pressure is gonna require a little less volume air um, from your air tank. So you can spray it, but I mean, they're both great guns. I'm not sure what application uh, you're doing. Are you doing clear coats or base coats? Um, and they say, you know, with base coats, it's better to use a high volume, low pressure and clear coats, low volume, low pressure. But I've sprayed both base and clear and single stage out of high volume, low pressure guns and low volume, low pressure and still got great results. I mean, you can't even tell the difference with the results. So it really doesn't matter. I, I don't I don't feel like it really matters at all. Um, so let's see. Any tips for spraying base coat, clear coat in the heat? Where I live, Arizona, might drop down to 90 before the sun comes up, typically 110 to 120 during a day. So um, for that, I would definitely use a slow temperature reducer hardener um, That because that's very, very hot, okay? And um, you might want to just wait a little while. If you're doing touch-ups, I wouldn't worry about it too much. If you're doing small touch-ups, fenders, hoods, or whatever, but uh excuse me but um if you're doing a complete car you might want to wait a couple months until it starts cooling down a little bit because that's really hot you know so you know 90 is hot already 90 you could do a complete paint job in 90 but 110 120 your clear coat's going to start curing pretty quick so it's you know you're in a race between time Definitely use a slow reducer, slow hardener, okay? Uh, because the heat is gonna compensate for the cure time. And um, just try to paint as quick as you can if you're doing a uh, complete paint job and make sure you're laying it on wet. That's the number one thing. And that's why I love a product called GunBud because you could literally strap it on to any spray gun head, air cap, not air cap, paint cup, okay? And you can literally light up. I have the adapter on here. So this is really, if I take this adapter off, it's not too hard. But that's where this GunBud Ultra Lighting System comes in because it'll literally light up. I think this one might need a charge. Nope. It'll literally light up everything in front of you while painting. And I will not do any more paint jobs without this thing because <clears throat> I don't know if you could see it. I got this stupid adapter on my but it literally lights up everything you paint. You can see candies better. You can do your blend jobs better, uh, everything. And it's a color tuned, color matching special COB light. Has over 400 reviews on Amazon. Uh, it's a top bestseller. Check it out. It's called GunBud. Um, it's, a, it's a universal lighting system that goes on any spray gun cup, gravity feed, or even uh, siphon feed. Like I've put this on a old siphon feed can canister facing upward like this <laughs> and painting like that. And it worked <laughs> kind of crazy, but it worked. 
I've put this thing on cans like this when I do undercoating, okay, under cars. And it worked perfect, okay, just like this. Spraying, you know, if you got to do wheel wells or whatever, like literally it works. So check it out. Cool little product. Um, how much time we got? So we are a little over on our time. So I'll tell you what, guys, I'm going to take another question or two <clears throat> and we'll call it a day. Um, then I'm going to drop a couple links. You guys liking it so far? Quick little auto body Q&A. <clears throat> well through zinc primer is a very good idea when welding in places that will rust after you've completed your work. So there you go. James Paul answered your question. I just haven't been doing much welding lately. And um, when I do, I just use epoxy primer right over it. <clears throat> I spray can with etch primer on my Camry hood and have tiger stripes send it down a metal. Should I start all over? Well, if you're, if you're, Getting tiger stripes or striping in your primer stage, don't worry about it because that's going to be covered with paint anyway. So I wouldn't worry about it. I've used the weld through primer. It is hard to weld on top of, but it works good around uh, the welded area. On spot welds, I use primer, then wire brush through the hole before welding. Yeah, makes sense. Um, man, there's a lot of questions here I missed. Hi, Tony. Do you recommend to use filler to feather out quite a large area, about five by five inches? What is the clear coat that is completely peeled off? Where the clear coat has completely peeled off, or is it better to just sand without using filler? Well, it depends on your on what you're filling. If it could be sanded out without filler and feather it out, then do it without filler. Just use primer and block it out. But if you need to add a little bit of putty, then you know, you're going to have to add some putty to that. I don't know. Hopefully, maybe I didn't understand your question. Uh, my pressure gauge broke off on the Atom X27 uh, when I used the first time. Will they send me? I would contact support. Go to Zula.com, Gail, and contact support. I'm sure they will help you out. Hey, Arnold, what's going on, buddy? Long time no talk. Hope you're doing well. <clears throat> How tight do you make the needle, the nut on the needle by the trigger? Are you talking about the packing nut? Well, this one, the X88s don't have a packing nut. Are you talking about this? Or... I'm not sure what... This is a packing nut here. Are you talking about this is the Atom X20? X20, and if you see it, this is a packing nut here. This you don't want to over tighten or else it will mess up your, your trigger spring here. Okay, it's supposed to be snug tight where this actually functions. Some people over tighten these and your trigger won't come back. So loosen it. Okay, sometimes people get a little leaking. It doesn't matter what gun you're using. But if you have a little paint leaking, sometimes you tighten this packing nut and it solves the issue. Just a very little, okay? Um, the other guns like the X27 uh, do not have a packing nut. It's just an internal spring. So this, you don't have to worry about it. Um, the X88 doesn't. So I'm not sure what nut by the trigger you're talking about. Is it this here? So this, I'm not sure. Yo, Arnold, how you doing? <clears throat> Dom says, uh, my X88 1.3 sp spray is smooth, super good, but when I try to spray with the 1.4, it sputters. I would make sure everything is tight because... You changed your tip, right? Just I would just double make sure of everything because if it's spraying smooth and fine with the 1.3, you shouldn't have any issues at all with the 1.4. So maybe just take it apart 
clean it, make sure this is tight. Okay, set your trigger and try it again. Oh man, I'm sorry about your dog, bro. On the needle, the Atom Mini spray gun. Yeah, so the packing nut, on the x16 is pretty much the same thing so yeah the on the packing nut on the x16 you just want to snug you don't want to over tighten it <clears throat> yeah dom so i would um email zula uh for support on that i i don't know why you're having issues when it when it's maybe you could send me a video like if you can send me a little 20 second video of of the issue um, it sounds like you're getting air in from somewhere. It sounds like something's not tight if it's sputtering like that. So, yeah. Yeah, it's tough, bro, like losing animals. That's why I hate getting animals. You get so damn attached to them. Like, I'm so attached to my animals now. It's ridiculous. <clears throat> but anyway, guys, I'm going to head out, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Um, how many of you guys are, I don't know if you guys know much about like what I do, but I have multiple online businesses and one of them is also in the e-commerce. Um, I'm actually partnering with somebody. Uh, we're actually getting into other water products uh, because of living in Hawaii and selling. I, I am still selling um, surf leashes uh, on Amazon and, and all over and, and through e-commerce. <clears throat> and we're doing about $8,000 a month revenue uh, with about $2,000 in expense, um, product cost and some advertising, um, basically netting $6,000 a month. And if you guys wanna learn how to set up your own little mini e-commerce stores um, to generate a couple thousand dollars a month in extra income, I'm gonna drop a link here. You guys can sign up for this free training. The training's not out yet. I'm in the middle of redoing the training, probably gonna be at about a week. But if you're interested, you can sign up to this training here um, where it's going to teach you about e-commerce, the e-commerce business, um, because, hey, the average millionaire has seven streams of income. You know, um, you could be selling digital courses online like I do. I sell digital courses online. I sell e-commerce products. I'm invested in cryptocurrency. I've invested in real estate. Uh, you know, I do stocks. So. You have to have multiple streams of income, especially in this day and age. And if you guys are interested in creating a separate stream of dependable income, check out this program um, and you can sign up for it right over here. It's going to be a free training. And if you're interested, you want to learn more, um, you can basically work with me and we can build out your own e-commerce store in whatever niche um, that you feel like you want to play in. You know, if, you, if you're like a golfer guy, maybe you could do something in golfing. If you're into fishing, maybe you might want to set up a fishing e-commerce store. Um, things have been going crazy with e-commerce and a um, lot of, lot of money, $4.5 trillion industry, <clears throat> a lot of money to be made online with e-commerce. And I have multiple stores online doing very, very well. So Check that page out, guys. Register. You're not going to get in anything immediately after you register. I'm still working on uh, the training program. So other than that, guys, that's pretty much it. Um, I'm still playing around with crypto every day. If you guys are interested in crypto, get on my crypto newsletter. Although even if I haven't sent out a lot of content on that lately, I've been making a lot of YouTube videos, but I haven't been emailing the list uh, but that's my crypto waters newsletter. If you guys are interested in crypto, basically plan on building the extension of my house, which is around 600 to 700 grand. It's going to cost. We're going to pay for that with crypto. So I'm going to show you exactly how we're doing it. Anyway, it's Tony here. Thanks for jumping on today's stream on auto body. Uh, new video on the van coming out. Hopefully later this week is going to be the probably one of the last videos on that project. Maybe two more. Maybe two more, maybe this one and then another final video. But we got two more videos coming out on the van project. Hope you learned something. <clears throat> Thank you guys for tuning in. You guys are awesome. And um, have a great rest of the week.
And uh, what is the difference between Bitcoin and crypto? So Bitcoin is considered crypto, okay? The whole crypto market is like Bitcoin, Ethereum, all these other altcoins, blah, blah, blah. There's a ton of coins out there. And I'm invested in a lot of coins. I've been buying Ethereum since it was 100 Hundred dollar, hundred hundred twenty five, even down to eighty dollars. <throat> um, I was, I got lucky. I sold part of the top when it was at forty five hundred dollars last year. Um, sold Bitcoin last year, pretty much going up to the top. I didn't, I didn't sell at the sixty five, sixty nine k top, but I was selling at thirty seven to forty five thousand, which was not bad if you look at it now. It's Bitcoin's down, back down to twenty one. But there are other coins where you can make a lot more gains. So if you guys are interested in crypto, sign up to my Crypto Waters newsletter right here. Uh, if you guys are interested in making money with e-commerce, sign up to my e-commerce, uh, my brand new training over here where it's not even released yet. But if you get onto this email list here, I'll be able to update you for those of you who are interested. If you're not interested, don't sign up, whatever. I don't care. Okay. It's your life, not mine. <laughs> But anyway, have a great evening, guys. Talk to you soon. I'll be back next week, Monday as well, um, for your little auto body and paint Q&As. Peace.